Good morning everyone and welcome to our second Blue Sunday. I hope you've had a really nice lie-in. Well, I bet your parents hope you've had a really nice lie-in anyway. So I just wanted to introduce our video for today. So we're continuing with the story of Moses as we did last week in church. And I had a great time with our older group where we were looking at the plagues and we were talking about how Pharaoh had a really hard heart towards what God was asking him to do. So gives me great pleasure to introduce Claire, who's going to tell us the last part of this story. And I will look forward to seeing you at the end. Hi children, it's really nice to see you again. I hope you've had a really lovely week at school and I really hope that you're now having a really nice weekend as well. Um, so it's my turn today to do the kids work talk. So um, we're talking about the end of the story about the Israelites in Egypt with Pharaoh and I'm sure you can remember um, from last week that there had been nine, nine plagues that God had sent. So now the Israelites were needed to get ready for the next part of their journey. Now I wonder when you get ready for an adventure or for a journey, do you need to pack a bag with some things in it maybe? Do you sometimes help mummy or daddy to get ready? Oh I hope that you do. What sort of things might you need for going out on a journey? I've got a bag here. And in my bag, I'm going to pack some things that I quite often take if I'm going out on a journey or a little adventure. I have got a drink, a nice cool drink of water. I'm gonna put that in my bag. I have got a snack. I've got a nice juicy apple and I've got a cereal bar. So I'm gonna put those in my bag as well. And also, just in case I get a little bit cold, I have got a nice warm jumper. So I'm going to pop that in as well. Are they some of the things you might sometimes take for a journey? Or can you think of maybe some other things as well? Well, the Israelites were told by God that they needed to get ready for a journey. And the way that God told them was through Moses. Now, Moses had been told in the last story, and I'm sure you remember, to go and speak to Pharaoh. And he said, let my people go. God says, let my people go. But what did Pharaoh say? Yeah, you're right. He said, no. Can you remember? Each time God sent a different plague, there were boils, there were frogs, there were locusts, there was darkness, all kinds of things that happened. And each time Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, now will you let my people go? And Pharaoh said, no. So finally, we had had nine plagues and now we are on the last one. And as you know, I like to tell my stories in Lego. So I have made a special Lego story for you today. Now here is Moses with his staff and he is going to go to Pharaoh and he is going to say to him one last time, will you let God's people go? Here's Pharaoh in his throne room and he says, no. So Moses tells him, if you don't let God's people go, then something very, very bad is going to happen tonight. All of the firstborn in every family in Egypt and all of the animals as well will die. It's a bit of a scary thing, isn't it? But you know what? Pharaoh still didn't listen and he still said no. So Moses had another job to do. He went to all of the Israelites that were living in Egypt. And I'm sure you remember that the Israelites, I've got a little family here, were Pharaoh's slaves. They were having to do all of the bad and horrible jobs for Pharaoh. And he was treating them very, very badly. So Moses went to the Israelites and he said, God has told me to tell you some very, very important instructions before we are ready to go on our journey. You need to kill a lamb to eat. And here is my lamb. Now, he's a lot bigger than a lamb. He's actually a lot bigger than all the people. But I thought we could still use him for our story. So there he is, our giant mm. lamb. Um, we need to kill a lamb, roast it over a fire, and eat it with some herbs and make some bread as well. So they had lamb with herbs and bread, and they had to eat it for their last supper in Egypt. And when they had done that, God told Moses to tell them, you must take the blood from the lamb and you must put it over the door of your house. So there we go. That's what Moses has just done there. And when you have done that, you must wait inside 
inside your house and wait until Moses tells you that it is time to go. So you know that is what all of the Israelites in Egypt did. They got themselves ready. They had this meal with bread and lamb and then they put the blood over their doors. They didn't really understand why they needed to do it, but they trusted God and they did it anyway. So the Israelites are going inside their house now, ready for their next instructions. And do you know that night, the awful thing that God had said would happen did happen. And the Egyptians were so, so sad because the firstborn in each family had died. But God had kept his promise to the Israelites and he had kept them safe. They'd listened to his instructions and they were all okay. And that finally meant that Pharaoh said, okay, do you know what? I've had enough. You can go. Leave Egypt. And so they left. They got all of their things and they got ready to go on a very, very long journey. And they had everything that they would need for a new life. They had pots, they had pans, they had clothes, everything that you could possibly imagine, even herds of animals. So we could put the sheep back, couldn't we, our giant sheep? All ready to go and start a new life somewhere else where they would be safe and they wouldn't have to be slaves anymore. God had kept his promise to the Israelites, hadn't he? So, what can we learn from this story? Well, we aren't slaves in Egypt, are we? That's not something that we have to worry about. But we do still need God and we need God to be able to forgive us for our sins. That's what we say sometimes, don't we, as Christians? And that means just all of those little things that all of us do wrong every single day because nobody's perfect. Everybody does wrong things sometimes. We can now say sorry to God. And because Jesus died on the cross for us, that means that when we say sorry to God, he can forgive us and we can be friends with him, which is amazing and fantastic. So God has given us instructions a little bit like he gave the Israelites, isn't he? He's given us those instructions to say, if you believe in me and you say sorry, I will be your friends and I will be able to have a relationship with you, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's something to have a little think about this week in the same way that the Israelites listened to God and listened to his instructions for their journey. I wonder if we can listen to God this week too. And if we feel like there's something we need to say sorry for, we can say sorry. And that means that we can be friends with God. Well, I hope you've had a really lovely time listening to our story today. And I will see you soon for another story. Thanks, Claire, for that retelling of the story. And I love the use of Lego. Jeremy was telling me last week that he had been reading the Minecraft Bible, which I think sounds pretty cool. And he'd seen some of the story in that Bible. Before you do your books, we're just going to say a quick prayer to finish. Um, so let's just talk to God. Father God, I thank you that no matter what we do, we can always come before you and that you will be our friend. I really pray that this week we will continue to listen to you and that you, we won't have hard hearts towards what it is that you're saying to us. Thank you for loving us and thank you for taking care of us. Amen. So, your job. Um, in your books, I believe you are now on week five. So if you flick through, it might be green, it might be blue, it might be red, it might be purple, whatever colour book you've got. See if you can find week number five and have a go. And I would love it if you would bring your books back with you next time we have a yellow Sunday, which is next week. So another seven days. Have a great week and take care. Bye bye.